So we are now going to go back to hear from Ingvar back in sunny California to hear about his amazing company. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you for rejigging the order here. Um, <clears throat> so. so, as I mentioned, we're developing a true replacement for traditional leather that is better for the environment, better for animals, and better for customers. So, Leather is an age-old material that we love for its luxurious look, feel, and performance. However, the singular luxury that we associate with traditional leather is tarnished by the environmentally harmful and wasteful processes that define its production. The modern movement towards better leather started over 60 years ago, and the acceleration of technological development in the biomaterial space has led to a tidal wave of new leather-like alternatives that you see here on, on the screen. The rise of these leather like alternatives has been so important. They've brought the leather industry to a critical turning point where we finally have real options to eliminate the environmental and animal welfare costs with, associated with traditional leather. By taking animal agriculture out of the equation, we know these technologies have the potential to drastically cut greenhouse gas emissions, reduce water use, and protect biodiversity. But for all the undeniable good the leather-like alternatives can offer the environment and of course animals, all of them come up short in one important way, quality. So no matter what the alternative technology, plastics, plants, mushrooms, fermentation, leather-like alternatives are just that, leather-like. At Beecher Labs, we want to be part of the solution to reduce the environmental impact of traditional leather, but we're using real cultivated leather to make sure there's never a compromise on quality. So how are we doing this with a process that honors nature in all of its intricacies? When I first started digging into the science of leather, uh, what was so interesting was to see that the look, feel and performance of traditional leather, all of the luxurious qualities that we love about the material actually come from the intricacies that naturally make up the animal hide. The part of the hide used to make leather is a really beautiful and intricate mosaic made up of many different cells and proteins all bound together. When tanned, the bonds between these different proteins in our mosaic are transformed. And it's those transformed bonds between the different proteins that produce the strength, durability, and luxury that we associate with traditional leather. Leather-like alternatives are very different in their composition. Instead of a mosaic of different cells and proteins, leather-like alternatives might be seen as well, less sophisticated, less artful. I can say this because leather-like alternatives are essentially repeats of a single type of building block. And no matter what the type of building block, whether it be cellulose, mycelium, or collagen, when you stack just one type of block, you'll never achieve the same mosaic quality that you find in natural animal hides that include many different kinds of building blocks. We're seeing that by relying on simple repeats of just one type of building block, leather-like alternatives might try to mimic but they'll never match the look and feel and performance of traditional leather. At Vitro Labs, our cultivated leather honors the natural complexities of traditional leather. It contains all of the same proteins found in traditional leather and faithfully reproduces the same mosaic found in nature. That's the reason why our cultivated leather consistently reproduces the same look, feel, and performance of traditional leather that leather-like alternatives will never achieve. Now, our process to do this, to make real cultivated leather, is it's conceptually straightforward. At its core, it involves sourcing animal cells called fibroblasts, and then creating a supportive environment to allow them to do what they naturally do, create animal hides. When we started Vitro Labs in 2016, there was a strong proof of concept showing that this could be done. We knew skin tissue could be formed in the lab. We had What hadn't been done was the production of high quality animal hides at scale. So that's where we got to work. Uh, we've been innovating over the last five years so that today both luxury quality and scale are a reality for cultivated leather. Now there are three major breakthroughs that made this possible. Our first breakthrough was in our cell line development and this has proven absolutely vital for scaling. 
So when we started five years ago, a traditional system for tissue production would have used an unmodified cell line of fibroblasts. Unmodified fibroblasts reproduce 40 to 50 times and then become senescent. They stop reproducing and eventually die. That creates an obvious bottleneck for production. So tissue production requires a constant source of cells. And when your cell line dies, you'll need to return to the source again and again in order to continue production. To guarantee a consistent supply of cells, but without ever needing to return to the source, we engineered an immortal fibroblast cell line. The cell line is immortal because instead of becoming senescent after 40 to 50 doublings, it reproduces indefinitely. Because our cell line keeps reproducing, we never need to return to the animal source. Our, immo um, our immortal cell line <clears throat> is so prolific that with one single biopsy, we can produce enough cells for billions of square feet of leather. And to put that into context, that's enough to supply the luxury market for the next decades. With our engineered cell line, it's one harmless biopsy and then done. And that's a game changer for cultivated leather. Our second major breakthrough is our large scale tissue engineering system. So traditional tissue engineering, like what you see in regenerative medicine, has been successfully used to make tissue, but only in limited quantities. The equipment used currently in other fields doesn't support large scale manufacturing. And that was another obvious bottleneck for producing cultivated leather at scale. So at Vitro Labs, we designed our own large scale tissue reactor engineered to meet all of our needs for a fully automated large scale production. Whereas traditional reactors output tissue a few square inches in size, our design flexibility accommodates sheets of leather, any thickness, shape, or size. We gain flexibility and efficiency with our custom-made design, and cultivated leather can produce a scale never seen before. So this proprietary design was one of the most critical keys to unlocking the door to large-scale commercial production. So the last breakthrough that I want to talk about here actually encompasses a suite of uh, optimizations to our tissue formation process. Over the last two years, we've been obsessively tweaking and improving every single step of our production process with a laser focus on creating the highest quality cultivated leather possible. So in this area, we've dialed in the design of our scaffolds onto which cells attach to create tissue. We've now found the precise shape and design for optimal tissue formation. Next, the immortal cell line that I mentioned, well, it not only produces an everlasting source of fibroblast cells to seed continuous production, but it also reproduces faster while producing the same diversity, quality, and even better density of collagen than an unmodified cell. So these optimizations of the cell line mean that we can get better collagen deposition than before, which again is absolutely critical for reproducing that luxurious look feel and performance of real leather that we and our customers expect. And we finally customize our growth media to optimize protein expression. With new partners leading the way in this space, we found just the right mix of nutrients and growth factors to support an even better production of collagen and other proteins. The higher collagen concentrations we achieve with our growth media produce an even better structure to our cultivated leather that is used to utilized in the tanning process. And that's how we deliver an elevated quality like no one else. So I'm extremely proud of our team here at Vitro Labs for leading the way in transforming the leather industry. We have an order in hand from a major luxury brand and we're ready to take the next big leap forward towards commercialization. If of course you would like to know more um, either about our platform or product, um, I'd love to continue the conversation offline. Thank you so much. Great. Thank, thanks so much for that, Ingvar. Um, so let's see if we've had any questions. Uh, we haven't, so I will ask some. Um, can you, so you did touch upon this briefly, um, how you obviously have gone down for the cell culture route, as opposed to uh, using fermentation to produce proteins that could then be incorporated into materials. Um, so can you just touch a bit upon how you were differentiated to uh, the likes of Bolt Threads and Modern Meadow, who are also quite well-known names in the field? Yeah, so it's all about kind of the leather-like alternatives, as I touched upon uh, earlier <clears throat> in the presentation. And 
you really kind of, you don't get the same performance. You don't get the same versatility and flexibility with the material um, that you do with traditional leather. And um, there is a reason why leather is one of the most enduring materials that, that we know in this, in this world. And because again, um, a, a hide can be transformed into a car seat, a soft leather glove, um, a handbag. Um, and it's really, it all comes from the same source, but it's really through the tanning um, and finishing that you create this luxurious material that we all prize for its, uh, for its uh, flexibility and, and versatility. Excellent, thanks. Um, so we've got a few questions coming through now. Uh, which one shall we go for? Um, what are the main challenges you face today in bringing your leather to the market? So it's a lot about the, uh, I mean, we're now um, building out our pilot scale production. So this is going to be happening this year. So it's about, uh, it's engineering challenges uh, more than, uh, than R&D challenges at this stage. Um, and then of course, um, you know, scaling out our current platform, uh, which is a which is a huge challenge, and and the team is working extremely hard both on on scaling out the um, cell line production, um, media formulations, and and of course the engineering of the of the of the um, bioreactors themselves. Yeah, um, and this one's from Richard. Uh, do you need any reg regulatory permission to call your product leather? Um, great question. So. Um, there is no regulatory framework in place uh, in most parts of the world. Um, I think in France, there is a regulatory, um, what can be, can and can't be called leather and uh, in Brazil, I think, but, uh, but the rest of the world, uh, no. Yeah. But because we are growing real hides, um, this is a conversation that we're looking to start with, uh, with the French government as soon as possible. So again, kind of um, how can we, how can we fall within that within that framework of of animal heights because that's essentially what it is mm -hmm. um and there have been a few questions coming through as to which markets you would tap into so obviously the luxury leather goods market is is your targeted market initially but in the future do you think you would tap into the um sports uh, leather goods market or for instance produce leather large enough to um be for the inside of cars Yes, absolutely. I mean, we've um, we've already um, kicked off conversations with um, car companies, and uh, and we are absolutely going to be targeting the uh, the sports and 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 uh, kind of uh, activewear industry. Mm -hmm. um, and let's see, we've got quite a few questions. So uh, there's one about fur. Do you um, think you'd be producing fur in the in the future? It's absolutely a product line that we will, that we'll be looking into, um, and uh, and uh, we have we have a number of uh, you know product lines in the in the works and, uh, and on our plans absolutely. Um, and this one is from oh I'm going back here. Uh, this one's from Raz, um, Russell. Um, what are the current costs of your leather? Will they be able to be cheaper than conventional leather in the future? or will it always be a premium priced uh, product? It is uh, absolutely going to be at price parity with traditional leather. Um, just uh, kind of the same inputs that we're looking at for our process are the same that, that go into um, producing meat using cellular agriculture. And um, there is a lot of work now happening in the, in, in the you know, auxiliary space where, where we're working on the cost of the inputs, cost of the bioreactors, and of course with scale, um, all of these technologies will become uh, at, come in at price parity, and and when we when we see kind of when we think about the regulatory framework that that Jim touched upon um, in his uh, when he was talking earlier, it's kind of the subsidies um, that we are going to be um, seeing hopefully lifted um, because there are huge agricultural subsidies. I mean, in the last uh, ten years in the U.S., 150 billion uh, were put into 150 billion dollars were put in as subsidies to the agricultural industry. Now, I hope that these things will change. And, uh, and of course, we're not, I mean, meat and leather in the market today is, is not priced as uh, with, with all its external, externalities included. So, so I hope that that will change um, soon. Mm 